Let's see the breakfast and plus TV Africa. We have Ezekiel Nyaitok who joins the conversation this morning. It's off the press. Ezekiel, thank you so much for making our time to be with us. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, let's start off with the leadership newspaper as we uh, go through all the papers. Now, in a PDP crisis, I use fate hands in the balance as INEC meets today. I use fate hangs in the balance as neck meets today. I beg to take that. Uh, that's the National Executive Council, or National Working Committee, however you put it. Uh, most NWC members want him removed as national chairman. Day of reckoning is coming, WK is quoted. We'll continue to fight for our place in PDP, marking day, uh, saying as, you know, uh, neck meets today. PDP, Labour Party, NNPP to threat, no threat to APC in 2023 polls. PDP, Labour Party, NNPP, no threat to APC in 2023 polls. Of course, the former uh, governor of Lagos State and presidential flag bearer, Bola Tunubu, is quoted on that. Federal government to penalize airlines selling tickets and dollars as uh, block funds. Why we detain train abduction negotiator, Mamu, uh, that's what the DSS is saying. And just before we move away, Amotekun should be allowed to bear arms. Akiru Dolo, really? Amotekun should be allowed to bear arms. And we have queried and a lot of persons are still talking about you know the constant harassment with the police and the fact that the police are still uh you know some persons are not acting in a civil manner but would it be rational to have uh, a motor crew bear arms prosecute oil thieves now pangerson tells the federal government terrorists killed two siblings kidnapped 13 in kaduna terrorists killed two siblings and kidnapped 13 in uh, Kaduna, that's it this morning on the leadership. We'll go to the next paper, of course, uh, in tour this morning, and uh, that is the Nation newspaper. We have um, a big story on the front page of the Nation newspaper there. Uh, Tinubu, we're determined to turn Nigeria's fortune around. No rift between party chair and I, says uh, APC presidential candidate. Two brothers confess to chopping off father's hand to Russell Cattle. It's a bizarre one, right there on the front page of The Nation. Uh, uh, quite bizarre. Uh -huh. Abuja Kaduna train, hostage negotiator in DSS uh, custody. Mamou flown back from Cairo, of course. He was en route to uh, Saudi Arabia for the lesser Hajj. Why Nigeria can't meet OPEC quota? Uh, Kerdolu, why Omotekun Corp? Uh, must must carry arms while Motekun Corps must carry arms. Um, last few stories from the uh, Nation newspaper: How terrorist fund activities. Federal government orders MBAs to comply with IPSAS. You can read more from the paper to know what IPSAS is about. Well, we have the Punch now, now and on the Punch newspaper: Massive crude theft, angry oil workers. Blame soldiers and protest today. Pengerson protests the whole in Lagos, Abuja, Kaduna, worry. Union threatens to stop oil production if theft persists. Federal government to retrieve a arrested vessel. Captain owner to face prosecution. These are the riders. I mean, the big story you find and the riders underneath uh, the bold story this morning on the punch. Aspirant meets presidential Atiku meets presidential aspirant, PDP neck holds today. Nigeria plans increase gas export to Europe in 2022. I mean, uh, we're very, it sounds like that's the statement that's been put out that we're positive that we're going to, you know, be on top of the situation as we will be exporting gas. Sano rejects 23.5% pay increase, state varsity kicks. Federal government to penalize airlines selling tickets and dollars. 
was also under leadership. Buhari won't withdraw rec nominations, Minister tells critics. Uh, you remember yesterday we talked about that on the headlines. Constituency project garb 700 billion naira and telemedic center faulty. Quara principle purportedly defies seven female pupils and absconds. Or should governor elects assembly or should governor elects assemble 52 lawyers for tribunal battles. Uh, these are the headlines on uh, the punch now. And moving on from the punch, let's take the final one. We have the Guardian, and uh, with the following headlines, a big one there. Neck meeting decision day in PDP over Ayu Atiku Wiki feud, and of course, um, that uh, internal crisis in the party receiving um, uh, uh, quite uh, daily coverage. What to call it that? Southern NWC members insist on Ayu's resignation stage walkout. BOT. Uh, chairman may resign to placate Wike's camp. Uh, Wike Fayoshe, Ayim Udom, others absent as Atiku meets ex-presidential aspirants. Atiku Wike face-off to end soon. PDP Kuba candidates to show. Uh, why party must respect governors uh, called children? Why party must respect governors called children? Wike uh, ignore Wike at your peril, the party chief warns. Uh, seems the the PDP is helping the papers sell more copies these days. Uh, more from The Guardian. FG threatens sanctions against airlines selling tickets in dollars. Uh, quite a bizarre one. And this is what you see happening these days. Why cancers in under 50 adults are increasing globally by scientists. Government abduct Kanke local government chairman in Plata State. And DSS confirms the arrest of Mamu in Egypt. They actually gave reasons uh, for his arrest. I couldn't go into that. Uh, because of time. Uh, Tinubu denies the plot to sack Adamu, sideline party from campaign cancel. And uh, Awolo Dosumu denies speaking with any journalists on the Tinubu Shatima ticket. All right. Um, so, Ezekiel uh, uh, Yayatuk is with us this morning. Thank you so much for your time. Um, um, architect Ezekiel Yayatuk. And uh, we'll start with the political story there. It's, uh, it's daily coverage. Um, but good morning to you, sir, once again. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, it's a daily coverage, and like I said, the PDP is probably helping the paper sell more copies. Um, what are your thoughts on, on this, this, the stage at which uh, this um, saga, or should I say this drama, or should I say this Nollywood script uh, is? Um, the Southern National Working Committee members are still insisting on uh, the resignation of Ayu, and they staged a the walkout from the meeting. Um, as regards the the Guba candidates of the party um, making a statement, uh, meeting with uh, uh, who they should meet with. They met with Wiki and Wiki told them to go uh, meet with the National Working Committee that they are not in a position to solve the crisis. What are your thoughts on what has transpired in the last 24 to 48 hours regarding this issue? You see, there's something that I expect um, PDP to know, uh, and um, they really should know this. Even APC is in the same... Um, um, a kettle and um, ADC, incidentally, we are also like um, getting a merch in it, and some of us are jumping in to see. See, there are two seasons, unfortunately, in political cycle there's a season of elections, and then there's a season of party management. If they understood this very well, they would know that there will be election in four years' time. So they should put those machineries of party management in place to elect the sort of candidates that can be presented to the public. Once you enter election season as we are right now, party management is at the risk of being misunderstood, almost irrelevant. The game is about the candidates. The candidates have a choice to completely ignore party machinery and set up the apparel, you no know, campaign machinery to be able to um, NYAET, okay, my name is not Etok, Etok, okay, ET, okay. Good, they, they, they set up the machinery for them to be able to launch their campaigns and win. A very clear example was when we had um, uh, our former governor, uh, president, Goodluck Jonathan, Though there was a PDP, he set up the camp. 
Now, what is happening, especially to the smaller parties, is that the management of the parties is not seen as people who want to win election. As a result, they just, you know, bring up like placeholders, effectively, who are going to, on the long run, align with the bigger parties. So they are not really people who are interested in running election. As a result, before time, the party does not set up machinery that will bring people that can run election. They are just there to be able to bring placeholders and fill and then negotiate with the big parties. So there's coming a new revolution, a new wave, a new thinking, a new alignment with, with the Peter Obi movement. People are starting to come in and they are starting to play what they call hashtag person, not party. On account of that, individuals in the smaller parties who believe they have something to offer, they are loved by the people. For instance, let me give you a very clear example. In Akwa Ibom State, we are going to have possibly a man called Senator Udoye Dege standing as an individual, a man called Senator Albert Basti standing as an individual, a man called, um, who do I bring it again, uh, from APC, there's a possibility of there's a possibility right now they don't have a candidate, but there's a possibility of a guy called Akanudofia coming in. I don't know. And then there's a man called Nyaito. These four people, and probably one, two, three other people, are going to stand before Akwaibom State. At that point, Akwaibom is not going to think, are you APC, are you PDP? No, they're not thinking party again. They are starting to see individuals stand. So at that point, why should I chicken out? Okay, there's the uh, PDP candidate, you know, um, Mr. I, I remember the name I, where I was talking was uh, taking me off, you know. So I remember, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, that's the name. So that, if I stood and Umoeno stood, for instance, who will acquire one people go for? I'm just saying that. So because of that, people are starting to be emboldened. So you have the smaller parties starting to have people who don't want to be placeholders, and that creates a problem. Go now to the big parties, because they've always had their way. It doesn't matter. They will win anyway. It's going to be just up to two of us. So they kind of sit on party machinery and ignore the players. But now there's that conflict coming in, and the players are having people that they are contesting against. For instance, bring a man like... Um, Mr. Tinubu, bring Mr. Atiku, bring Mr. Peter Obi, bring Mr. Kachiku Dumebi, let them stand on the podium and face Nigerians as individuals, not as systems, not as structures. That's why we have six months of campaign. On the basis of that, let these people network. I was Is it can yeah, I took? Oh. Yes. I'm sorry, we're almost out of time, but we need to move away from that. Now, looking at the Punch newspaper, the president or the presidency has responded to the concerns of civil society as regards the nomination of resident electoral commissioner. Now, the concern was raised by, uh, you know, civil society organization that some of these persons are uh, party, you know, members who are of the party of the APC of course and, and 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 they have been asking that you know there be a withdrawal but this is the response of the president Buhari will not withdraw rec nomination uh, as according to you know the minister Lai Mohammed saying that that it will not act on social media trial what are your thoughts I, I, I think that um, I can't wait for I don't, I, don't, I don't see Mr. Lai Mohammed being removed as a minister, but I can just say that I can't wait for his days to be over, and then he will come out and then listen to himself again. Minister of Information, and you say that the voice of the people is social media. What does he understand by social media? What is information? What is the greatest medium of communication of information today? And you are minister of information, and you are calling it social. Is social media, you know, it, 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 it populated by ghosts? That's the greatest platform that you articulate the minds of the people. And these are the people that send you know, confidential memos to Mr. President and tell him what to do and what decisions to take. 
And where the voice of the people is irrelevant and they are like rants to you, then the problem is not with the people. It is you who do not understand your office and what is expected of you. If you see a man that prides himself on the, the basis of integrity, bringing people that are partisan and the public is able to look into it, I expect that what the information minister would do is to see what these people are saying, if it makes sense or not. The people could be misled, they could be misinformed. So it would be in his place to come to the plan and say, oh, really, this is what you think, but this is what happened. So what we are having is really in conformity with the law and not to dismiss them with a wave of the hand, like are uh, you calling them small boys and things like that. It, it, we, we, we appear as irritant. On the other hand, if what we are saying is in line with the Constitution and your principal is doing something that goes against his integrity, you know, it is your place to very nicely and diplomatically inform your principal that, sorry, the observations of the public seems to be correct. They put a lot of information there. We've cross-checked it. And so I think this will impinge on your credibility. It might be in your better interest as you are exiting to exit on a platform where the people see you as a man of integrity. If you need to change this, uh, it might do you more good than insisting that it must be your way. And on the long run, you give election that people have no confidence in because perception is reality in politics. To have uh, members who belong to a certain political party as uh, resident electoral commissioners. I mean, is, is it such well, a big deal? And, uh, it is. Okay. It is, it is such a big deal because these are the people that, if I have somebody, if I know I have a strong um, position, I can make sure that the configuration of the, of, or in, a, in a particular area, and I don't want the vote from that area because they are going to vote for my opponent. I can make sure the configuration of the beavers there they have changes. That's going to disenfranchise, disenfranchise a lot of the people within that area. This is what is the technology is good, but technology is deployed by people and they could sabotage that process. So, but, but do you also still believe that the president, because, I mean, in recent times, as we inch closer to 2023 election, the president has been very big on, I will deliver free credible elections, 2023. And with all of these actions, do you think that there's a connection with his statement and what we're faced with? The president is over dependent on people that don't have his back. He should find a way of having an interface. He should have a phone where he can scroll and read what's on the social media directly. Because I believe that a lot of times the president means well, but they take advantage of his vulnerability. He's believing in them and they misinform him. When the president comes out and leaves office, there are many of his ministers that he will not be talking to. Because he would realize that he was largely misinformed. He's going, all the aides and all those briefings are going to end, and he's going to read backlog of things. And I think that at that time, he will be a very unhappy person. He is over dependent on people who don't have his back. That is my reading of the situation. So he means well, but he's taking decisions based on uninformed knowledge and not based on facts and realities. And that's what makes his decisions to come out in a lot of times. Uh, you know, he gets somewhere, he's like, what? You mean you are still here? You know? Oh, is that what happened? Oh, I didn't know. Mr. President, in public, I didn't know about, you know, good. Uh, uh, is it clear to the, the airlines uh, in the country, aviation sector has been under some uh, uh, serious pressure, to put it mildly, and uh, the leadership newspaper has um, uh, brought up a story this morning on its front page, uh, looking at the new twist in the aviation sector uh, with the federal government set to penalize airlines who are selling tickets in dollars. Um, now, we see this happening in economies where the, 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 um, the, the currency is falling at an alarming rate every single day, and they're not sure whether they're going to make a loss or not if they're selling the local currency. So what are your thoughts on, on this development? I, I, I need the Nigerian economy to be run by business people who understand dynamics of economics. Number one, you don't give me... I, I run an airline... I do my servicing in dollars. I buy my parts in dollars. I do my checks in dollars. I can't have access to dollars. 
because the central bank does not prioritize my operation. And if anything, what's going on within the central bank is anything but transparent. Now, how do I find dollars? Without finding dollars, if I must resort to black market, the differential between the official rate and the black market rate makes nonsense of what I receive, so it doesn't work. So I've got to think outside the box and prioritize those who can pay me in dollars. Let me use dollars or in foreign money. And you come as a country and say, no, 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 you cannot do it. You watch one side of the divide. What is the other side of the divide? Have you thought of it? The two hands have to come together, the left and the right, for the hand to wash clean. You've got to make sure that the dollars are available if you have to stop them. The dollars are not available. How are they going to do their sea checks? So you have airlines trying to manage because they don't have enough foreign exchange to go and service their aircraft. And what's going to happen next, if we are not careful, is aircraft are start to fall from the sky and Nigerians are start to die. And you say, oh, aviation sector, this or that. You, can't, you have to see it coming and preempt. If you don't want them to sell their tickets in dollars, then please, for goodness sake, close that parallel market and official rate, bring it together, and let us know the rate that we are, uh, are operating with. Or find a way of getting productive so that, you know, I wish we would have time, but I don't think you may have time. But that issue of theft, uh, crude theft, is one issue I really wanted us to look into because yeah, Nigeria, please, please, please go, go, go on and, and, and tell us what, what do you think about it. Yes, yes, Nigerians need to wake up. You can't tell me that the, that crude of a certain. Did you listen to, to to the analysis that was made by 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 this? Um, I can't remember the name of my but about the volume of theft of crude. Number two, why don't we have the consumption rates in this country? I've done this analysis before. Very clear. There was a time that they did a profiling of analysis and they said there was a differential between 25 million and 35 million. And then somewhere along the line, it moved up to 60 million liters per day. And at the stage, you got up to almost 100 million liters per day. And these are working on subsidy. And now you're projecting subsidy at 4 trillion. There is a lot of very, very unacceptable deceit. And Nigerians should reject these people. They should put everybody on the table to say what they believe about subsidy, what they believe about why we cannot have our production knowledge on a daily basis when we have seen a, 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 a board, a display board room in, in Qatar or I uh, can't remember the exact country where every well what is pumped up is seen. But, but it's clearly, I took. I mean, th this is not new. It's almost public knowledge that um, crude oil is. Yes. We even have a term for it, bunkering. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not new. If Nigerians, how, if Nigerians how, didn't how, do anything it about it back. all these years, what, what, what assurances? How we show? But when it, 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 there was a certain, it, a certain um, um, open public hearing where my my oga Etiabet done Etiabet, who said I was minister of petroleum and I'm a an petroleum engineer. And I do not know how a ship will be missing. I do not know if I tell you the volume of oil that goes into one tanker and the number of barges that need to go in there. And people are joking with Nigeria. Nigerians should wake up. But, 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 but is it going yeah, to Because we've yeah. been prompted to, you know, just uh, call it a wrap in no time. I'd, I'd like to ask you, you're saying that Nigerians should wake up. How more can Nigerians wake up? For instance, in recent yeah. times, you would also want to agree with me that the River State Governor has been, yes, I'm weak, has been on top of the issue of oil theft. I mean, he's yeah. accused, uh, you know, the military of involvement in, you know, oil theft. At the time, he's also ordered that a federal lawmaker, I mean, so you'd say that uh, representatives be arrested in the fact that you have some of those highly placed persons, those who should actually ensure that law and order is observed and that, you know, lives and properties are protected to some extent, not necessarily that it's their sole responsibility, but they have a role to play. They are involved in this theft. So what more can Nigerians do? How, how reactive and how, what else can Nigerians really do, really? It comes down to one man, Mr. President. One man, Mr. President. Forget party. Forget my own ADC. Put my candidate, to maybe Kachiko, on the hot seat and tell him what is your game plan on this. 
bring article, forget PDP, large, small, I don't care. What is your understanding and game plan on record? Bring at uh, 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 my 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 guy uh, Tinubu, uh, 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 Kwan Peter Obi. Put them on the stop on the on, on on the hot seat. Let them talk to Nigerians to the issues specifically concerning subsidy. What they know, what they understand, what they believe, what they have in mind to do. Bring up the issue of this bunkering. Let them talk to Nigerians. Bring up the issue of power. Learn the issue of security. All right. To this four elements. Let uh, them let Nigerians forget party and put individuals on the spot because at the end of the day, parties don't rule. Individuals well, do. Well, Ezekiel, uh, it sounds very futuristic, a futuristic plan, but we're no, talking please, about. Please, don't, please. I know I take exception to that. It doesn't it sound futuristic. It must be done. So, so what happens to those who have been accused and involved in all tests? We have to do it now. We have to do it now. Now, now. Oh, we, 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 have, we have to go. <laughs> we're out of time. Uh, but uh, it's, it's interesting the views you've shared. Uh, um, the questions, the questions you've asked this morning. We'll certainly hope to have you again. Um, can, can you join us again later this morning? Uh, as clearly I took, because we're talking about the ADC, and we'd like to have you on. Oh, I was hoping to extract a public commitment there, but I, I think our producers are already talking to him. Thank you so much, sir. Always a thrill to have him. Mercy uh, on the program every morning. Uh, 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 really, with spot on analysis. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Ezekiel Nyai. We, we look forward to having you join us uh, sometime as we uh, progress in the course of this show. But just before we go, let's tell you what happened today in history. Please stay with us. <laughs>